I'm Desi Serna, author of Fretboard Theory, Guitar Theory for Dummies, and Guitar Rhythm and Technique for Dummies. In this free guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how to play in the style of Stevie Ray Vaughan's Pride and Joy. This instruction is suitable for intermediate level players and up. You can follow along using free guitar tab. To get it, just go to the link in the video description. Before I begin, I need to explain that getting a handle on playing Pride and Joy is a challenge because of the distinctive techniques involved. In order to make the song easier to learn and play, I simplify it and teach it in a step-by-step -step fashion. If after completing the simplified version, you want to learn how to perform the song like the original recording, then I recommend that you purchase the official and complete sheet music and tab. To approximate the sound of Stevie Ray Vaughan's guitar tone, I'm using a Strat style guitar made by Bluesman Vintage Guitars. And it's got some Seymour Duncan uh, Antiquity Surfer uh, pickups in it. I'm playing through this Fender Pro Junior, but I'm not using the speaker on it. I'm actually coming out of it and coming into this Rivera Silent Sister Isolation Cabinet, which has a vintage uh, 30. Um, I'm running a Visual Sound Comp 66 compression pedal. <laughs> And I'm adding some reverb um, on the mixer. And then uh, for some parts of this, I'll kick on some overdrive. I'm using a visual sound, which is now True Tone VS Exo Dual Overdrive pedal. I'm using the left side of it. Here's the overdrive. And again, here's the clean sound. And I started. Uh, I open Pride and Joy on the middle single coil pickup with overdrive. But then when I got to the main rhythm figure, I turned the overdrive off and I moved to the neck pickup. I kicked the overdrive on again at the end for the... One final thing before we get started. The song is a standard 12-bar blues chord progression in the key of E, with guitars tuned down a half step to E flat in the original recording. But for this lesson, you keep your guitar in standard tuning. OK, now let's go through and let me teach you uh, the technique and the basic parts to this song. So be sure to follow along using the free tab. I've got the tab in front of me here, and I will be referencing it um, throughout the lesson. So let's talk about the. Uh, time this is uh, this song has a triplet uh, shuffle feel so that means instead of playing straight eighth notes like they're gonna have a triplet feel like one two three one two three one two three one two three and you have a short long feel so you so you play like you're playing the one you hold through the two and the three so it's like one three one three one that's called a shuffle whoops So that's the first thing you want to know about this, is that triplet shuffle feel, uh, rhythmic feel that the song has. OK, so looking at the tab, you start out uh, playing some unison E notes with the first string open and the fifth fret of the second string. And you slide into the fifth fret from the third string like this. Just a little um, slide there. You could pick this with downstrokes or upstrokes. Sometimes I like to pick upstrokes because I just like the sound of the, to hear the E, the first string first. In the original recording, um, this part actually comes in, I think it comes in on beat two, actually. It's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then it, and then it moves on. It almost sounds like Steve Ray Vaughan cut out of that first lick a little too early. At least that's the way I always heard it. Uh, but then later I realized he was actually coming in on beat two, not beat one. In order to simplify this, I just had to come in on beat one. So you've got a whole measure of this. And then you come up here um, to the fifth and the minor third of E. Think about an E minor bar chord like that. Uh, and you're going to pick this. Uh, with eighth notes again. And you can even bend. In you know, blues-based music, players will kind of toy with pushing that minor third to the major third. So you 
Not too much on this one, but you can bend that a little bit. Then you come back down here and repeat this. You end on one. And I actually played this on the middle at the beginning. I played this on the middle pickup, and I had some overdrive on it. Because as I listened to Steve Ray Vaughan do this, it appeared that to me that he was using the middle pickup with some overdrive on it. So here it is uh, with those settings. <laughs> So you hit on beat one and measure four there. You have an eighth note rest, and then you have uh, a bend and release, and a couple extra notes sounds like this. And I would really think of these parts as being from the E minor pentatonic scale. Which is the primary scale that uh, Steve Ray Vaughan used to play uh, the lead guitar parts on this song, which we're not covering. We're just going to focus on the main rhythm guitar parts and the main rhythm figuration and the techniques that go along with it. So, um, figure, uh, excuse me, measure four there, there is. So that's the second fret of the third string. You're going to pick it, bend it up. You're going to hear it release. Play the same string open, and then end at the second fret of the uh, fourth string on E. And then somewhere in there, you have to turn off the overdrive, move the pickup selector to the neck pickup, and then here we begin. Uh, measure five. This is the main uh, figuration of the song. Sounds like this. This is a signature Steve Ray Vaughan rhythm style. And there are several things going on in here. And if I tried to ha have you play it all at once, you would fumble through it and you would miss some important things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down. I'm going to teach it to you in steps. We're just going to learn a little piece of it, and then we're going to add to it. And I think this will help you um, get this technique down, because I know a lot of guitar players struggle to play this part. The first thing we're going to focus on is just the bass notes, the primary notes that are part of this uh, rhythm figure. And they are this. Then it repeats. So if you're looking at the tab, you can ignore um, all the X's. We'll talk about that in a minute. And you can ignore those open strings that you see on strings one, two, and three. You're going to look for just the fretted note that lands on the beat. So you got E. You have its major third, G sharp. You have the fifth B. You have the sixth, C sharp. Then we're heading into the next measure now. Here's E, an octave higher. Then you come back to that major third G sharp, fifth B, sixth C sharp. So here it is again. And it repeats. So memorize that and rehearse it. And this is basically kind of a uh, um, kind of like a bass, a, a, a you know, a boogie woogie bass line that a bass player uh, would play, and you're playing it on you know the bass strings here on the guitar. Okay, here's the next step. We're going to go through and play those notes again, but instead of only strumming and picking those notes individually, we're actually going to strum across all or most of the strings, or a good portion of them on the way down with each downstroke but we're going to mute this, the strings that do not include our target note. So we're going to hear our target note, and then we're actually going to hear the other strings will just be scratches. It'll sound like, like a raking sound, like this. So let me explain what's going on here. There's uh, some left hand muting that needs to be done. So when you play that first note, the open sixth string E, 
you want to lay your fingers across the other string so that as your right hand strums across the strings, you hear the E, but the other strings are muted. Like that. When you go to the G sharp, you could probably fret it with your third or your fourth finger. You want to lay this finger across or perhaps use some other fingers behind here to mute the other strings so that you hear only the G sharp and the other strings, you just hear scratching. You could practice going back and forth between E and G sharp. It's okay if it sounds a little messy, you can clean it up over time. So you want to go through each note in this rhythm figure and work on positioning, positioning your hands so that your target note uh, is heard but the other strings are muted. So the next note is B here at the second fret of the fifth string. And the way that I mute here is when I put my index finger down, I position it in a manner where the tip of it will butt up against the sixth string. I also wrap my thumb just to help keep that sixth string quiet. And then I lay my first finger down in the other strings so that I only hear the B. Once you get used to this, um, you know, it's one thing just to be able to play each individual note uh, and mute the other strings, but it's another thing to go from note to note, from fingering to fingering, um, immediately and get everything into place and have the note fretted and the other strings muted properly. That takes a lot of practice. So go back to the beginning and work on playing all of these notes now. Let's keep going. The next note is C sharp here at the fourth fret on the fifth string. So you got to figure out how can you position your hand in order to keep the sixth string above it uh, muted and then the other strings muted. So I fret with my third finger. I butt the tip of it up against the sixth string a little bit. I've got these fingers and my thumb involved with muting some of the other strings. Notice that there's some extra added noise in there on occasion. Don't worry about that. You can clean it up over time. When we put, uh, when we go to the next step and put everything together, we're going to make it all work. So, all right. Next, we have the octave E here at the second fret of the fourth string. So I fret that E. The tip of my finger is butting up against the fifth string A. My thumb is is muting the sixth string, and then my index finger is laying down to mute the other strings. So once you can play and mute each note individually, then work on putting them in order to play the, uh, the rhythm figure. Okay, notice it sounds a little messy. Don't worry about that. Your version may sound a lot messier. I remember when I was first learning this song years ago, I really struggled to get it down and, and do the muting properly, and it probably sounded something like... It was bad, but I kept at it, and uh, eventually over time, I got the feel for how to position my fingers to uh, sustain the notes that I wanted to sustain and mute the strings that I wanted to mute. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want to clean it up as much as you can, but it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll see that in a moment. Okay, so we've worked on playing the primary notes, which is kind of like a bass line. We've worked on uh, playing them together with some muting and raking as you strum down across uh, multiple strings. The next step is to add uh, some upstrokes if you look at the uh, tablature, uh, beginning at measure five, you can see we've got the primary notes played together with muted 
strings. And by the way, I went ahead and put X's on all the strings just to indicate they're muting, but you don't necessarily have to strum across all of the strings every time. You strum a downstroke and you hit multiple strings. Uh, it's not necessary that you mute and, and play every string there, but that it was easier just to tab it out that way. And then those are all on the beat, and on the upbeat in between, as your pick is coming up, you play strings one, two, and three open, like this. It could be strings one and two, or one or two and three, or maybe you accidentally hit four, it doesn't really matter. You just hit the first few strings in between the beats. So let's put it all together now. Let me do it for you first, and then I'll give you some instruction on how you can put it together yourself. So here it is. So you hear all those parts coming together, those fretted notes, uh, the scratching and the, and the raking, uh, which is made possible by the muting, and then now the uh, open strings. It's really kind of... Uh, it's like simulating the sound of a drummer playing a shuffle rhythm on, on the drum kit and kind of rolling into that uh, backbeat, you know, hitting, hitting the snare. It's got a, it's got a very uh, percussive uh, sort of element to it, and it's a trademark of uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan's style. You hear him do it in a lot of other songs, too. For example, uh, Cold Shot, you know. <laughs> That's another lesson. Anyway, back to... Uh, Back to Pride and Joy. So, as I mentioned earlier, it's one thing to get your fingers in place so that you can pick and sustain one note and mute the other strings. But then, having to go from note to note and change your fingering and immediately get in position to fret a note and, and mute the other ones is a challenge. And then it becomes even more difficult because in between every note, you have to lift your fingers off the fretboard in order to get open strings, then you immediately have to put your finger uh, back down on the fretboard, fret your target note, and mute the other string. So putting all of these things together is a challenge. And like I said earlier, when I first learned it, it was very messy. And I just had to stick with it over time and clean it up. And you can do the, uh, the same thing. So let me play through it again. Or let me just show you what I mean. So you know, I'm playing that first note, and then I come up. Open strings, I'm lifting my fingers, then I gotta put everything back in place for G sharp. Then I gotta lift my hand on the open strings, and then B. So on. Notice how once you put it up, uh, put things together. Once you bring it up to speed, um, that uh, that muting, the open strings, your hand getting back down there, it cuts off some of the extra noise. So even if there is some added noise in there, it kind of works, you know, and it just adds to the whole effect of this uh, of this part. I should point out that this is simplified, like I mentioned earlier. Stevie Ray Vaughan had even a little bit more going on. But I just want to teach this to you in its simplest form so you can focus on getting the technique down. You're welcome to take a closer look at the original recording after this lesson if you'd like to work out some other parts. So we played this rhythm figure around the E chord, which begins at measure 5 in my uh, tablature. When you, it, this follows a standard 12-bar blues chord progression. When you get to measure 9, uh, you switch from an E to an A. And so you just want to take this uh, bass line and move everything over a string and start on A and play it on A. Same thing. You've got to go through and you've got to mute every uh, note so that you can use rake on those downstrokes. Here on the fifth string, my thumb has to uh, it, uh, comes into play right at the beginning, because that's in order to play the A. My thumb is actually muting the sixth string by just butting up against it here. 
my index finger and some of my other fingers are muting strings one through four so that only the fifth string A uh, rings and sustains. <coughs> and then, you know, you work your way through the rest of the, uh, um, of the figuration and figure out where to position your thumb and how to position your hands to get everything else to come out right. As you work on this, you know, it may sound really messy. Stick with it. Work on hitting those target notes and work on positioning your fingers so that you're muting the other strings. And over time, it will come together. Don't give up on it. And then you need to work on those upstrokes in between. So when you put it all together, it sounds like this on the A. So work with that for a while. You can go back and forth between A, uh, E and A. And so on. Uh, you know, when you're playing a 12-bar blues in the key of E, your other chord would be the five chord B. And you could actually work out this same uh, rhythm figure on B as well. Just think of it as being the same as A, but everything's going to be moved up two frets, so, you're, so you'd have with the open strings on the upbeat. And when you get used to that, you can actually practice playing through a whole 12-bar blues just following each chord um, with, this, with this rhythm figure. So I'll do that for you now. So, um, you know, some 12-bar blues have that quick four change, and some do not. Uh, Pride and Joy does not. So here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Four chord A, back to one, five chord, back to one. You could work toward doing something like that. Sometimes the five chord is split, you got half a measure of five, half a measure of four. So you could do something like. I just played the first half of the uh, rhythm figure on B, then I switched to A, and I played the first half of the rhythm figure on um, A. So that's, that's just a way that you could practice, and you're almost there. You have most of uh, um, Pride and Joy. At least you have most of it as I teach it. Like I mentioned just a moment ago, uh, Steve Rivon uh, kind of embellished this part with some fills and some, some chords and some other things, and I'm not going to get into all those details, but at the very end, when you get to that turnaround where it goes five, four, and one, he did play a lead line over that. And uh, I decided that I did want to teach this because it's a great example of using um, the minor pentatonic scale, more specifically the minor pentatonic blues scale. We've got some of that flat fifth um, in there, and it's just a great lead line. So when I get to this point in the song, I turn on the overdrive to thicken it up um, because that's what I... Uh, hear Steve Rivon do, and here's how this part sounds. We are now, uh, we're picking up a beat before measure 13 in the tab. And notice that we have these, uh, uh, we have triplets here, triplet eighth notes. So it's a one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, so this is actually going to start on beat four. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. Um, let me turn the overdrive off just for a minute. And uh, let me j just walk you through this. So 
you're playing E minor pentatonic. Think about pattern one. Here's pattern two. And by the way, I uh, teach the pentatonic scale at length, and I talk about patterns and techniques and transposing in the uh, instruction that's available on my website. I'm not going to get involved in that right now. I'm assuming you already know the pentatonic, pentatonic scale. Uh, so here on beat four in measure 17, you slide up from pentatonic pattern one into pentatonic pattern two. Very common move here. And then uh, we have measure 13. This would be where the five chord B7 starts. And you actually play that same lick two more times. So it's one, two, three, four, one. And let me back up to measure 11, and let's, let me play some of that rhythm figure so you can hear how it transitions then into the lead line. So from measure 11, so measure 11, playing on E, here's measure 12. B, and then I never make it to C sharp after these open strings on beat four, I go right into the lead line. We're in measure 13 now. Or sometimes I actually slide down and then pull off like. So from beat four and measure 12, then here's measure 13. Or you could just go. Uh, the end of measure 13 is. And then if you look at measure 14. Right there in that pentatonic pattern one, you've got a little chromatic half step movement there as you walk up to the uh, tonic pitch E. Let me back up a little bit, beat four of measure seven, measure 12, excuse me. So you might want to rehearse just that much, practice that transition from the chord, uh, from the rhythm part. Okay, so we left off uh, the first beat in measure 14, and I'm going to pick up then, this is the fourth note in the measure, 14, and it's, and the next grouping is, so let's just try that. So very beginning of 14, you have the, then you reverse directions, now you're going backward in the scale. There's that flat fifth from the so-called blues scale. And then you have a little hammer-on pull-off here. Let me pick up with uh, the last three notes and measure 13, which are, and then I'll go right into 14. Why don't you try just playing that much? Okay, so we left off at G, the third fret of the sixth string, and measure 14, and from there you go open E is the first note and measure 15. So let me back up a little bit. Whoops. Once you get that phrase down, back up and add it to uh, the whole thing. I'm actually going to start the last three notes at the end of 13. Let me back up a little bit further uh, and add some of that rhythm figuration in there. And uh, 
uh, we're in measure 15. We just left off with the open E. You come back to uh, this slide here from pattern one into pattern two, which we're actually just going to play these notes together. You could just back up a half step or a whole step or so and just slide into them like this. And you're going to play, uh, you've got eighth note triplets here still. This whole lead line is based on eighth note triplets primarily. And it sounds like this. Sometimes I like to play it with upstrokes. Let me back up. Maybe a little further. Uh, and the last thing we need to do then, we're at the end of measure 15. Let me back up. We'll pull off there. That completes measure 15. All of measure 15 beginning to end sounds like this. And measure 16. like that. From the from beat four of measure twelve. Let me speed it up just a little bit more and play for measure eleven. Let's do it with some overdrive. I'll count you off. I'm going to start at measure 11. Actually, I'm going to kick the overdrive on right at measure, right when the lead line starts. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> just a great example of using the pentatonic scale with some chromatic passing notes in there with that flat fifth blues um, tone in there. Some great blues phrasing. I mean, you can tell that Steve Rivon was pulling from some kind of, you know, old Delta acoustic sort of stuff, you know. Some electric guitar styles. I mean, it's just got a rich blues flavor to it. These types of licks would work, work really well in rock music and stuff too. It's a bit of a challenge to play it up to tempo. It does go by quickly. Um, you, you know, be patient and work on playing the part cleanly. Slow it down and play it at a tempo um, that you're comfortable with and then gradually work on increasing your speed uh, over time. Even if you can never quite get up to the uh, tempo of the actual song, you can still learn a lot from this lead line, and you can still uh, borrow a lot of these licks and phrases and techniques and use them uh, in other things. Well, that completes the parts that I wanted to teach from this song. I hope you have enjoyed this free guitar lesson. If you would like to learn more about music theory for guitar, including guitar scales, chords, progressions, modes, and more, then go to my website at guitar-music-theory.com. That's the words guitar music theory with dashes in between them. When you get there, sign up to join my email list. You can receive some free materials, and you can preview some of the full courses that I offer. Well, thanks for watching. Please click like on this video and leave me some positive comments.